Okay, 4-3 biomes. So biomes are a, they're a complex of terrestrial communities that cover a large area and are characterized by certain soil and climate conditions and particular assemblages of plants and animals. Different species of organisms and plant inhabit different biomes. So if you have a species of plant that can only survive in a tropical rainforest, it won't be able to survive in maybe a northern uh, northwestern carniferous forest. So, and that brings up the next thing, tolerance. So tolerance is the ability to survive and reproduce under conditions that differ from their optimal conditions. So if a species of plant can survive in more than one biome, they have a high tolerance, they're more likely to be able to survive and reproduce and keep going, while one that can only survive in a specific biome has the uh, greater chance of going extinct. Okay, uh, biomes and climate. So, biomes and climate are the climate is an important determining factor in what makes a biome. You'll see that the groupings of biomes are similar in these climate zones. So, towards the middle, you have the hotter. Um, towards the equator, you have the hotter biomes. While well, when you get farther away, you get colder and wetter uh, biomes. So, and then microclimates. So microclimates are small, tiny areas of a specific climate that differ from their surroundings. Okay, major biomes. There are a lot of major biomes, and these are very important. To start off, there's the tropical rainforest, usually found near the equator. Then the tropical dry forest, tropical savanna, temperate grassland, the desert, Temperate woodland and shrubland, temperate forest, northwestern uh, coniferous forest, the boreal forest, also known as a taiga biome, a tundra, and then mountain and ice caps. And then there are other land areas which include mountain ranges and polar ice caps. Okay, 4 4 aquatic sy systems. So aquatic ecosystems are determined primarily by the depth, flow, temperature, and chemistry of the overlying water. Uh, there are t two main types of freshwater ecosystems, flowing water which, uh, and standing water. With a flowing water, you'll find these in rivers mainly. And this is when organisms living in flowing water ecosystems must adapt to the flow and to the life of moving water. So very often you'll see organisms with suckers or um, able to hang on to rocks so they can uh, survive in the river. And then there are standing water ecosystems. Now these are found in lakes and ponds. And usually with standing water ecosystems, you have water circulation. So you have a river flowing in, maybe a river flowing out. And this helps circulate the water. With just a plain standing water, the water will become stagnant and unable to be, and most organisms cannot survive stagnant water. So found in most standing water ecosystems are plankton, which are tiny free-floating organisms, usually producers. They use the sunlight to produce their own food. And then there are phytoplankton, which are tiny unicellular al uh, algae. And then there's zooplankton, which um, they're like the consumers of the plankton. They feed on the phytoplankton and the regular plankton. And then under freshwater ecosystems, there are two other types. There's freshwater wetlands, which is an ecosystem in which water either covers the soil or is present at or near the surface. So the three main types of freshwater wetlands are bogs, which are dominated by moss and acidic water. Then marshes, which are shallow wetlands, usually found near rivers. And then swamps, which are uh, resemble flooded forests with very slow moving water coming through them. And then the last type of freshwater ecosystems are estuaries, which are wetlands formed when the river meets the sea. And then this is, provides a mixture of fresh and salt water, so it's a very specific ecosystem. There are very few animals or organisms that can survive both fresh and salt water. And then, so because of the unique um, aspects of this ecosystem, there's a lot of uh, 
detritus, which is uh, small floating organisms which provide food for the other larger organisms. And these actually support an astonishing amount of biomass. There are thousands of different organisms that can survive in these uh, ecosystems. And then so the two types of estuaries, there's salt marshes, which are found in the temperate zones, and then there are mango swamps, which are coastal wetlands, usually found in the tropical regions. Okay, marine ecosystems. So there are two main marine uh, uh, divisions. There's photic zone and aphotic zone. So the photic zone are the, is the well-lit upper layer, and it's usually about 200 meters deep. So this is um, where most of the marine mammals are found, and where most of the photosynthetic organisms are found. And this is because they can get enough sunlight, the producers can get enough sunlight to provide food for themselves and to the consumers. Next is the aphotic zone. This, is, this stretches from the 200 meter mark down to the bottom of the ocean. And here, it's permanently dark, frigid temperatures, and very high pressure. Here's where we find the chemosynthetic autotrophs. Because they, cannot have, they do not have enough sunlight for photosynthesis, they use chemosynthetic. So they, it's, instead of light energy, it's chemical energy. Okay, and then in addition to the division between photic and aphotic zones, marine biologists also divide the ocean into zones based on the depth and distance from the shore. So there's the intertidal zone, the coastal ocean, the open, and the open ocean. So each supports distinct ecological communities. And then there's the final one, the benthic zone, which is just the entire ocean floor. Okay, so the intertidal zone. So this is the beach, which is covered at high tide and exposed at low tide. So it's, it's the tide pools, it's everything that you can see at low tide, and it's covered at high tide. So this produces a very interesting ecosystem where it's submerged in water half the day and open to the air the other half the day. So the competition in the intertidal zones leads to zonation, which is the prominent horizontal banding of organisms in a particular habitat. So you can see that all of one type of organism live in one area and all of another live in another area. Next is the coastal ocean. So this goes from the low tide mark to the edge of the continental shelf. And the most common and um, ecosystem in the coastal ocean is the kelp forests. Now, kelp forests are made of brown alga, which is an extremely fast-growing uh, form of sea plant, a seaweed. Um, here in the coastal ocean, we find these smaller fish, usually found in schools. Next, we have the coral reefs. So, coral reefs are found in the warm, shallow areas of tropical climate. Uh, the coral itself is actually a living organism. It has a calcium carbonate skeleton that they then fuse with millions of other coral animals to produce the coral that we see. And in coral reefs, we see a lot of symbiotic relationships with animals living very closely together, either in, um, uh, in many t forms of relationships. Okay, next we have the open ocean. So this is from the con continental shelf outwards, and it can be anywhere from 500 to 11,000 meters deep, and it's the, in the deepest trenches. So here, the organisms are exposed to incredibly high pressure, frigid temperatures, and total darkness. Uh, there are low levels of nutrients, and uh, the organisms that live here often have to find very special ways of providing food and nutrients for themselves. Next, we have the benthic zone. So the benthic zone covers the entire ocean floor, and it gets its name from the ocean floor organisms, which are called benthos. So this includes sea stars, sea anemones, and marine worms. And they feed on the uh, chemosynthetic producers at the bottom of the ocean. Okay, key concepts. So what to take away from chapter four? The greenhouse effect. Know what causes it, the fact that it's beneficial. The three main climate zones, the polar, temperate, and tropical climate zones. Know biotic factors of an environment versus abiotic factors. Know about the community interactions in the ecosystems. And then know the difference between primary and secondary succession. Know all the major biomes and maybe some key characteristics of them. 
Know the three characteristics that determine aquatic ecosystems. Know the difference between standing water and flowing water freshwater ecosystems. And know the six distinct ecological ocean zones.